for me, the key is it should be like I don't want him on a boat, you know. Even though we have to make something that's 7-0, I don't vi envision him on a 7-2 single fin egg. Out of all the boards, I feel like I have least clue on what this thing's gonna do. What is he? What is he weighing in at? I think he's like 170, 175 or something like that. Okay, so lighter than I imagined. I thought he was about 200 pounds. I've seen this tail a lot over the years, and I think this is a is a mayhem. You know, he's wearing a, a yellow crop top, red speedos and some boots, hacking away at this, you know, copy of one of my boards. It triggered a lot of people. Yeah, this is a proper wild card, this one. You know, I tried to call him many years ago and find out what he's about, so... It's real different, eh? You know, I'm kind of into accommodating people now. Bit of a change. This thing's probably the most whacked out thing, though. No? As I said, this one could be absolutely amazing or it could be really bad. Hopefully it's absolutely amazing for everyone watching. In this episode of the Electric Acid Surfboard Test, Mick Fanning will decide which two of the remaining boards will join the 5.3 and 5.11 ASIMs he's already chosen for the final. And due to both geographic and philosophical differences, none of the shapers in this episode had previously met, allowing us to witness the ever fascinating discrepancy between what you see and what you get. First up, New York garage shaper and barber, Joe Falcone flies west to collaborate with Matt Parker, a former electric acid winner who's made a career helping surfers make the leap from high performance to non-conformance. I'm Matt Parker from Southern California. We're here in San Clemente. We've been shaping for 21 years this year. It's interesting to collaborate with somebody you've never, you don't really know and that you've never really met or never really worked with. Ideally, it's like if you were going to collaborate, it would be with somebody you were, you've known for a long time and you kind of know their strengths that maybe match up with your weaknesses. And so this one, it's like a total unknown because you're, I, you know, I've, I don't even know him. I don't even know Joe. And My name is Joe Falcone. I'm from Rockaway Beach, New York, and I've been shaping for 19 years. I had never interacted with Matt once before. Never won. He was like this kind of Wizard of Oz to me, you know, like the man behind the curtain. I don't even know if he knew who I was. We met last night because he, <laughs> he stayed here at the shop. <laughs> so we knew we were, meet, we're, we were meeting today, we needed a place to stay, so he's, we met up for a minute last night. I think he flew into LA and he was like, well, you can stay at the shop if you need to. He's like, all right. I was like, okay. <laughs> I'll bring an air mattress, I guess. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Uh, what's going up? How are you? Nice to see you. Thanks for putting me up. <laughs> I know, was that? It was great. It's the first time I ever slept in a surfboard showroom. Yeah. And I hope it's not the last. <laughs> yeah, when we got the assignment originally, I was like, what would I make Mick Fanning? And obviously, I make a lot of twin fins. You make a lot of twin fins. Who's Mick Fanning? <laughs> I think what makes a good collaboration in in anything, it's flexibility, you know? It's like openness and like communication, really. It's like what makes anything work, like any kind of relationship. As shapers, we all think we have all the answers and we kind of have egos a little bit and think we, we make the best boards. And so sometimes it's tough to be open to someone else's thoughts. So it's, but it's kind of cool to be forced to do that because that's just the, the name of the game here. So. I know we, we both have an affinity for ASIMs and have made ASIMs over the years. Mm -hmm. um, so I just thought like when we got paired up for this, I'm like, we're gonna make an ASIM board probably. Yeah. If you wanna go twin, that's like, that's my that's my home, you know? Cool, let's read Yeah, I'm stoked cool. to do that. a couple files and look at it. Yeah. I kind of like designed in a little bit of like predetermined like heel well stuff mm -hmm. and like some concave in the deck. Because Always love the way those fell. He's like jumping on the board the, for the very first time and maybe only gets to surf it two or three times for this to film for this thing. And so it's like you almost kind of want to like 
bring it close Pre to that sweet spot. Yeah. Break it in a little yeah. bit, you know? I think we're good to get this scent off. Get them cut, and then we'll bring them back and we can get in and like fine tune them. Sick. What, what was the, let me see. Might be, might be a little too eggy. Like overall width on this one is like same, like 19 and three quarters for him. I'd probably pull one in. 15 inch wide? Probably something like that. Yeah. yeah. That's a measuring stick. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, I, I tattooed it. I tattooed it myself. No way. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. There's a six inch mark. That's, that's amazing. Zero. That's one right there, the first that's, one. That's the way And then do. that's 12. That's amazing. Yeah, because I got good. just like, you know, when you're when the tape measures on the other side of the room and you're just like, fuck, I just need the quick 12 inch yeah, mark. You're just like, Bam. boom, there, 12. It's a different challenge, you know? It's not just navigating the design. It's like navigating someone's personality, like how to move around them in a way that makes them feel comfortable and free to move on their own and not feel like my movements are restricting your, their movement. It's like an unspoken dance, you know? It'll definitely be a new sensation for him. I don't think he's, I've never seen him surf a board that's anything like this, so that'll be fun. And Matt's like such good energy and good vibes. He's just, he's just mad sweet. Like he doesn't, doesn't seem to wear any of the stress that affects his life on his sleeve at all. You just have these ideas of like what people are like, you know? And then you meet them and you're like, Sh shit, like, why did I have any idea of what any, you know, why do you have any idea of what anybody's like? You just, you just gotta meet them and like let, you know, and, and go from there. That was fun, yeah. It turned out pretty good. Better than I would have expected it to go. Just because you get in there with somebody you don't know, you don't know who's gonna do what, and, and it seemed to mesh pretty good. Like we had like similar ideas, seemed to gel pretty well, and he brought like a little different uh, take on the rail thing, which was cool. It was like a, something different that I wouldn't have done normally. Yeah, he's very really good with the tools. Like really, you can tell he has like a really good feel, you know. You can tell he's really thoughtful about it too. He doesn't like, it doesn't rush, which is cool. He's good rhythm to it, which I think is really important in shaping. The only surprise would be that it was just easier than I probably would have expected it to be. This board is money. It's so perfect. Like it makes my skin, it makes the hair on my skin stand up when I like do the rail feel, put it under my arm. I have a feeling Mick is gonna really enjoy that board. Yeah, I think I think the conditions like we've, these are the cleanest conditions. I think people sort of see a board like this and they just want to go and, and stand tall and sole arch and just sort of cruise around. And I really think you you want to go out and see where you can push these boards. Um, you want to go out and, and rip on them. Yeah, I think it's just sort of in the last few years, everyone just wants to. If it if it's got twin fins, then all of a sudden. Twin fins means put your hands in the air. It's it's totally wrong. I think you got to go out and just yeah try and see where they can go and, and see what they can do.